quick, and this talk is titled You Too Can Build an uh, Ethereum Mesa. Uh, so just a little bit about me, I'm based in Australia, uh, Brisbane, Australia, I'm a software developer. If you want to check out my social, uh, social links, it's my GitHub and my Twitter. Uh, before we start, I would like to emphasize that this isn't, a, oh, I have two important announcements to make, but one, this is not a technical talk. This is not going to teach you how to build mixes. So if you, if you want to do that, I think workshop B10 would be a better place. And two, my cat has an Instagram, so if you guys could follow it, like at mr.miso.oz, it'd be uh, pretty good, you know? So this talk is mainly about imposter syndrome, and I think uh, we, we as, a, as a tech community should really uh, uh, talk about it and acknowledge it primarily because it's just so uh, prominent in the uh, tech industry. And, uh, you know, uh, if we don't acknowledge it, we can't be the best community we can be. Uh, I would like to share a little uh, story that I've been through, a little roller coaster ride in my life uh, for the past three months. And essentially, what happened in July was that I quit my job in Brisbane, Australia, and I had a one month buffer gap before my next job. I was a bit bored, and I decided to browse the uh, Ethereum subreddit. And turns out there was a list of projects that the Ethereum Foundation wanted to happen. One of them was a Ethereum mixer, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, actually, building an Ethereum mixer isn't that easy. You, you actually have to go into quite in-depth cryptography, um, <clears throat> software design patterns, and uh, currently smart contract designs. Uh, at one point, I was copying and pasting a prime field orders into etherscan.com and finding contracts that verified contracts with the same prime number to extract <clears throat> certain pieces of logic that kind of make my, my smart contract work. Occasionally you can't even find it on GitHub, you find it on Pastebin, but not GitHub, and you find it verified contracts on Etherscan. So that's, uh, that's how deep I had to dive, and there was no real reference materials. But, but, but I got it done anyway, I built the mixer, I got the UI up, I built the MVP, and I launched it on, uh, on Ronson. It was, uh, I was quite happy on it, so I made a tweet. Uh, I actually had like, what, 50 minutes, so I wasn't expecting much traffic, but, uh, Vitalik actually retweeted it and it kind of catapulted my, my Twitter follow accounts. Like now I actually know how influence of people. So like, I have like a thousand followers now, so I'd be like 20x, 20x better than the uh, ICO I participated. But, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, actually, because of this, I got invited to a workshop, um, a zero knowledge proof workshop, um, sponsored by the uh, Ethereum Foundation. and. Some of the world's best engineers in uh, cryptography and uh, specifying zero knowledge proof and in, in abstract maths uh, were there. Uh, but something, the takeaway of the conference was that the, the best of the best engineers, who I wasn't even sure if they were speaking English at the time, uh, acknowledged the fact that everyone, uh, everyone at the workshop was at different technical levels and uh, everyone should share the perspective and their opinions regardless of their background or experience in the field. Like, your insight is as valuable as anyone's. So I guess uh, if I had to give a conclusion, a couple of takeaways, is that it's okay to not know everything, and different perspectives in the Ethereum community are welcome, and it helps us to kind of be the best version or the best community we can be. I apologize if this isn't as technical as you guys wanted, but uh, yeah. Uh, if you guys got any questions, those are my social links and my, uh, my cat's Instagram, which would be really nice if you guys could, could follow it. So, thanks. <laughs>